What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be brewing an American classic, the cream ale. This is an absolutely iconic style of American beer uh, that really did somehow manage to survive prohibition. It's a style that harkens back to pre-prohibition and incorporates some truly American elements in it. It's a style that I made before with a Kvike yeast uh, with pretty great success actually, but I, I think it deserves a second brew because it is a really interesting kind of beer. But just like most American beer, it really traces its lineage back to the influx of European brewing immigrants that moved into the United States and started brewing in the 1800s. They brought their brewing knowledge and their techniques with them from Europe, but started using American ingredients to create the beers that they knew how to make. And these are mostly European styles of lager. Now, cream ale is an ale. Um, well, technically, cream ale is actually a hybrid beer. Now, what do I mean by that? It falls in the same categories as California Common, Kölsch, and Alt beer as well. This means that they're typically traditionally made with a hybrid yeast. This is a yeast that falls somewhere between an ale and a lager in terms of preferred fermentation temperature, usually about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and these are strains that can be fermented as if it was an ale, or it can be fermented as if it was a lager. Cream ale was probably made back in the day with a lager yeast fermented at ale temperatures. But nowadays it's more commonly made with one of these hybrid yeasts and I'm choosing to do that method. I'm actually gonna be using a Kölsch strain today to ferment this one with, um, which I guess if you really wanna get into semantics, technically makes this an American Kölsch, um, whatever. It's a cream ale. I'm calling it a cream ale though because there's another critical component of this beer and that is a high concentration of corn in the grist. So typically an American brewer would be looking at six row barley malt, corn and American hops to work with. Um, now I'm not using six row today. There's no real need to other than for the sake of authenticity, two row is perfectly fine to convert flaked corn. And that's what we're gonna be using for our corn component today. The other big thing though, is the use of American hops. Today, I'm gonna be choosing one of my favorites, Crystal, which is an old school American hop and it is absolutely delicious. When it combines with the sweetness you get from corn, it is going to create a really, really nice flavor in this beer. A cream ale is typically gonna be a little bit dry as well. So we want this one to drop a little bit below 1010 for its final gravity. And it's gonna be in the mid 5% ABV. It should be a very drinkable beer. Not typically the thing you'd make in winter, but you know, I wanted to make one anyway. I like these kinds of beers. But it's also another one of my wife's favorite beers. So hopefully we can get her on tasting panel for this one. Before we jump into the recipe, I do wanna thank a couple organizations for helping make the video possible. Uh, the first one is Northern Brewer. They have been a fantastic support supporter of me providing the ingredients for this batch of beer. Uh, you can also find plenty of ingredients and equipment and stuff like that on their website, so do check them out. Secondly, Clawhammer Supply. They manufacture the system that I've been brewing with for about two years now, along with a couple other pieces of equipment that I have. Their system is great though. It's 120 volts or 240 volts, depending on what you wanna work with, 10 or 20 gallons. Uh, great options, great system, great YouTube channel as well. I'm sure you know about that, so do check them out. So now let's jump into the recipe. We're starting out with six pounds of American two-row pale malt, but instead of just getting generic pale two-row malt, I wanted to try out for the first time mecha grade malts. Brian over at Elementary Brewing swears by these guys. So I'm gonna try them out for the first time ever. We're gonna be using six pounds of their La Manta pale malt. Uh, to provide the base malt for this, followed up by two pounds of flaked maize or flaked corn. These are the same things. Uh, so adding in that corn component is a critical part of this cream ale. And then to dry it out a little bit, we're gonna be adding in one pound of dextrose, corn sugar, simple as that. That's the entire grist, so it's pretty simple. For our hops, we're gonna be using all crystal in this one. The crystal I have is all 6.6% alpha acid, so we're actually not adding all that much into it. It's gonna be uh, a relatively low amount of IBUs in here, but we still want to infuse a decent amount of hop flavor into the overall beer. So I'm adding in only a quarter ounce of crystal at 60 minutes to bitter followed up by half an ounce of crystal for flavor at 30 minutes and half an ounce of crystal for aroma at zero. For a water profile in this beer, typically I would look at this and say, okay, it's a kind of Pilsner derived character. I probably don't need to add too much to the base water uh, using spring water as a base for this one. Um, but I decided now I'm gonna actually try and just go for a plain old yellow balanced kind of water profile here. So. Um, I'm starting out with eight gallons of spring water, which has a little bit of residual minerals uh, in it, uh, but not too far off of distilled water. So if you wanna start out with distilled water, that'll work fine as well. So the water profile I'm targeting is 
59 parts per million of calcium, 7 parts per million of magnesium, 13 parts per million of sodium, 84 parts per million of chloride, and 81 parts per million of sulfate. Um, zero added bicarbonates. I'm sure there's some in the spring water though. And to get that water profile, I'm adding in three grams of gypsum, two grams of epsom, one gram of sodium chloride, and four grams of calcium chloride to that water. For our yeast today, I'm gonna to be using, as I said, a Kolsch strain. I'm using today Lalaman Cologne, which is a pretty good Kolsch strain, actually. I've had a few beers fermented with it from our local brewery, and they do a pretty good job. So um, I wanted to try it out for myself. For our mash on this one, I'm keeping it simple today. Um, I'm gonna be sticking with a plain old single infusion mash for an hour at 152 Fahrenheit. That should get us a relatively balanced beer at the end of it. It will definitely get a little dry though because of that sugar addition. So don't feel like you have to mash this one at a lower temperature to encourage attenuation. That sugar component should take care of that for you. Hopefully this ends up being a pretty simple beer. So without further ado, let's go get this brew day started. I added eight gallons of spring water to my claw hammer supply, 10 gallon, 240 volt system. And I began to heat that up to the mash temperature of 152. As this was heating up with the exception of the flaked corn, I crushed all of my grain and I measured out my water salts and added those to the water. Once the mash had reached the dough in temperature, I doughed in with the grist in its entirety, stirring it up thoroughly to prevent any sort of dough balls. <music> 10 minutes into the mash, I measured the pH and I saw a measurement of 5.55, measured at a hot temperature. That's actually a pretty good pH for this beer. So I did not add any lactic acid or anything like that. I let the mash sit for an hour at 152 and then I ramped it up to 170 for a mash out, held it there for 15 minutes, and then I pulled out the grain basket and let it drain for 15 minutes. All the while setting my controller to a temperature just slightly below boiling to prevent a boil over, but to get close to the temperature. Once I reached the boil, I added my first bittering hop addition, which was just a quarter ounce of crystal. Then 30 minutes later, I added my second hop addition, which was half an ounce of crystal. 20 minutes later at the 10 minute mark, I dissolved in my corn sugar, being sure to stir that thoroughly. And I also added in a little bit of yeast nutrient and a Whirlflock tablet. And then at the zero minute mark, 10 minutes later, I added in half an ounce more of crystal. At that point, I turned off the heat and initiated a whirlpool, trying to get the tube and the hop debris and all that stuff piled up in the center of the kettle to avoid carrying it over through my chiller and clogging my pump. Once the whirlpool had completed, I began to chill down to an appropriate pitching temperature. I was able to chill down to 70 degrees with a single pass through the plate chiller. Thankfully, this time of year, the water is pretty cold. Once the wort was all in the fermenter, I took an original gravity sample and I saw an on-target OG of 1048. This is only one point lower than our actual target numbers. At this point, I went ahead, I pitched my yeast and I placed it into my fermentation chamber to ferment. So for the fermentation on this beer, uh, this is a beer with a lot of possibilities. You can use a lot of different yeasts to get the same effect or similar effects in this beer. So I'm gonna be using Lalaman Cologne Kolsch yeast. And if you wanna stick with the Kolsch yeast like I am, but you don't wanna use the Lalaman, there's plenty of other options. There's a Safale K97, there's Y yeast 2565 and WLP 029. You can also use the German Alt yeast or the German Ale strain. These are gonna do similar things. Imperial also has a Kolsch slash German Ale strain uh, in the form of Imperial Dieter. For Kolsch and German Ale, I would definitely recommend fermenting 
this one around 60 to 65 Fahrenheit to get the best results with just a little bit of fruitiness, a little bit of character in there, but not too much. You don't want to go overboard on it. Now, if you want to be more authentic, you can use an American lager strain for this one. So uh, these are actually typically hybrid lager strains, something like the Cal Common strain. This is the Y East 2112 Cal Lager or WLP 810 San Francisco Lager. Um, you can also use Imperial Cable Car. You can use a very clean fermenting alias as well, like US05 or uh, WLP001. Those are all good options. Like I said, any sort of clean fermenting yeast can be used in this at the right temperature. And you can even use a lager yeast and ferment it at a slightly warmer temperature, like 3470, or maybe S23 will get you there. And you can even use a Kvike strain as well. Something like Lutra might do the best job here. Uh, just getting a nice clean fermentation. If you do use a Kvike strain though, make sure you're fermenting that a lot warmer than 60 um, because your Kvike's not gonna do anything at 60. So lots and lots of options. The main goal here is to try and ferment this in a way that you encourage a small amount of fruitiness to come out, a small amount of yeast ester to come out, not too much. So look at your yeast that you're choosing and choose an appropriate fermentation temperature to push that boundary just a little bit to encourage a bit of fruitiness. You can also pressure ferment this one as well. It's a decent candidate for it. Dry hopping, it might turn it more into a pale ale, uh, but it would be an interesting thing to do, especially with crystal, because you don't really see that very often. So there's a ton you can do with this, but just to focus us and to recap what I'm doing, I am adding in one packet of Lalaman Cologne Kolsch yeast into the fermentation. We're fermenting it at a classic Kolsch temperature of about 60 to 65 Fahrenheit. Maybe slowly ramping it up over time to encourage attenuation. We do want it to be dry. Hopefully our final gravity is somewhere between 1008 and 1010, and uh, that should get us a nice five-ish percent ABV beer. Uh, so we'll ferment it probably for about two to three weeks. Um, slower fermentation is gonna result from a lower temperature, so uh, it will take a little bit more time. And then after that, we'll transfer it into a keg and uh, get it on tap and serve it. So hopefully it turns out pretty nice, and I'll see you guys in a few weeks. So until then, cheers. The fermentation for the cream ale went relatively well. Uh, ended up about two weeks total fermentation time, which was pretty much right on schedule, if not a bit faster than I actually initially anticipated. At this point, I kegged the beer, and I actually elected not to add cold side findings to this as I normally would, instead letting it lager over the entire month of January. Since I was doing a dry January, it was the perfect opportunity to do a natural clarification process, so I let it carbonate and lager in my kegerator for a full month. So the beer is called Krispy Kreme, and it comes in at 5.3% ABV and 16 IBUs. The appearance of the beer is a nice golden color. Uh, it is totally clear now, and this is actually naturally cleared up. Um, so I didn't add any cold side findings to this at all. I lagered it over a period of about a month because, well, I was doing dry January. This gave it plenty of time to sit in the keg and naturally clarify without the use of gelatin or biofine or clarity firm or any of that. Pours with a really fluffy, bright white head um, that has very good structure and has a thick layer that sticks around for a long time um, and leaves very good lacing as well. So now let's go in for aroma. The aroma I'm getting off this beer is mostly Pilsner malt, kind of. A little bit of corniness too. And then there's a slight floral hop character. But overall, I mean, this is partially a function of the glass I'm drinking it in mostly is a very light aroma. All right, so now let's go in for mouthfeel. So the mouthfeel on this is really an interesting combination of lightness, but also kind of softness as well. It's uh, not nearly as soft and light as the wit beer was that I just made. It does not have hard edges. It is still very light bodied and easy drinking, um, but for what it's worth, it's not quite lager crisp. Uh, so it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Maybe if I let this sit for like two or three more months and traditionally lager out, it probably would get crisp eventually. But overall, it, it keeps the beer feeling like indeed, like an ale and not like a lager. 
Uh, so now let's go in for flavor because the flavor on this beer is really cool. So this is one of the most multifaceted pale light beers that I have brewed. <laughs> and um, it's got a flavor that evolves over several seconds, as you said in the mouth. And they're very different flavors that you experience over time. So initially, there's a nice snappy bitterness in there coming from the crystal hops that I used. And then you get a little bit of a Kolsch berry note because I chose some Kolsch yeast. It's kind of like a nice little small wild berry note. Very subtle, but it's there. And a little teeny bit of tartness which immediately fades. And then we go into the most pronounced corn cream puff flavor I have ever experienced. If you're familiar with those little puffed corn cereals, uh, I think it was called Kix. Um, that is exactly what the aftertaste is. <laughs> this, this flavor is so pronounced in terms of being a sweet puffed corn um, character and I love it. <laughs> it's just so different um, and it's so delicious. So overall, it's a really surprisingly flavorful beer. I think it really punches well above its weight in terms of what you might expect out of your standard cream ale. Um, I, I'm really liking this one. Overall, it was not too difficult to brew at all and um, it really was quite the nice character. And it kind of highlights why it's called a cream ale in the first place. It's certainly not because you're adding any sort of cream or dairy product or lactose to the beer. Some people do interpret it that way. Cream ale really initially got its namesake from the mouthfeel of the beer because it was creamy um, compared to your standard American lagers that were available at the time. So, and I really do think that that is what's coming across in this beer. It's really nice. It makes for an easy drinking experience. It's not just a generic pale lager or Pilsner, um, but it's still uniquely American and it's really quite interesting, the history behind this beer. So you've heard my thoughts on it, but let's go ahead and get a couple other folks' thoughts on this beer. So if you watched the last video, you'll definitely recognize these guys. We are here again at Mexitali Brick Oven Brew House in York, Pennsylvania, and my guest tasting panel is back again for another beer. So we have Rick, who is the head brewer here, and Karen, my sister, whom you may recognize from very early on in the channel. So <laughs> today, gave them the cream ale, and we'll get their thoughts on it. Well, first of all, I think it's a beautiful color. It's very clear. It's impressive. It's hard to do. I nice get, grainy flavor. I get the, the grain and the corn on the nose right away. Actually, you know, I, I think it's really good beer. Um, now you mentioned it was brewed with coal yeast. I get a little bit of fruitiness. Is that from the yeast or? Okay. I think it is. Um, but like berry. it's really grainy and I personally like it. It would, if it was colder, I think it would be crushable, easy, easy to drink. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. It is kind of warm. It's been sitting in my car for a while. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah. It's, it's got great flavor. Thank you. I really, I really do enjoy it, actually. Clean. Yeah. Did you guys get the corn puff? I mm. totally get corn. Yeah, corn. Okay. Just want to make sure that's not just me. <laughs> corn. No. Yes. I get corn. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, much more, I mean, much more than any other cream now, I really. Tasted. Okay. Yeah. And a finish is nice. Yeah, it's a nice finish. Yeah, actually, this is quite good. This is a beer I would buy. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna blow your mind when I say it's made with dry yeast? <laughs> you, yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> really? Yeah. What kind? Malamant. Kolsch. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeast. I like this, Steve. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. I'm, huh? I'm really. Actually, it's not what I. You was like it more than the whip here? I do. I do. Yeah, okay. I do. Sorry. It's kind of weird because it's a cross between a coalish and a corn and a cream ale. Yes. And like a, you know, I probably should, if I was going true to the style, probably would have used a, an American lager, like a cow lager or a USO5 kind of American I, style I, ale yeast, probably, because right. it would have been cleaner. Um, but I'm kind of happy with the way it turned out. So. I feel like <laughs> the coal yeast comes through way more in this. Okay. And that that is more characteristic of this beer. No, I like it. Thanks, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So I'm here with my two favorite tasters of all time, the most detailed palates on the planet. These guys are certified BJCP judges, first of all. So let's get their full uh, an opinion on this beer. <laughs> that smells really good, actually. It smells good. OK, definitely getting green like this style. one. This one's my favorite. A little fruity apricot. A little spicy, not much. 
I get corn for days. A little raisiny. What? Raisiny? Raisin. Really? Fruity. That's interesting. A little bit. Yeah. That's actually really interesting. You guys have different palates. Than just very know. little. I mean, just like percentage of it. Okay. I just get corn. <clears throat> I really do, but it's I'm a good the, kind. I'm more on the apricot side. I have biscuity corn. <laughs> biscuity corn. All right. Biscuity corn. Cool. cool. It's like a, a Ritz cracker, but with yeah. corn. So that's probably the mecca grade malt coming out. It's the Ritz cracker. Very good. I like it. Yeah, I like this one. Bet you like it. Good job, Steve. Thanks, guys. So for potential improvements on this one, uh, really just adding maybe a little bit more uh, flavor hops. The puff corn cereal character is really nice at the end, but I think it would play super well with some nice kind of floral hops. So like a nice Halatau derived hop. I found myself really wanting to get more crystal character out of this, and I think adding in some extra uh, flavor additions would have done this beer pretty well. And secondly, this is not really much of an improvement, it's more of a, just a random curiosity. Um, while I really like the way the Kolsch's blended in this beer and, and delivered uh, a really nice kind of berry note, uh, I'm just kind of curious to see what would happen if I used maybe like the cow lager, uh, which is what you'd normally make a cream ale with, um, or, you know, your standard American ale yeast. Because uh, it would give a different character to the beer. I would really be curious to see what would happen if I took the same grist, the same ingredients, and blended in uh, with a different yeast. Overall though, definitely a good success and uh, a beer that I would absolutely make again. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, before you leave, please go ahead hit that like button, please hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't, and comment down below with your thoughts on everything. If you want to support the channel, there's a number of different ways to do so. I have the merchandise store where you can get this design and many others and many articles of clothing and other things. Uh, please check out my Patreon as well if you're curious about that. My Patreon supporters are making big moves for this channel and helping me upgrade my production quality. And I'm very, very thankful to them for the support they are offering. Also, if you're curious, please check out the channel memberships option as well as the super thanks option. And if you're curious, check out the Amazon store that I have where you can find all of the equipment that I use to brew with as well as the production equipment that I've been using for a while as well. And if you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer, so check that out for some more frequent and additional content. And last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you, thank you very, very much for being here and watching all the way to the end. I put a ton of work into these videos and I really appreciate it when I see that people watch all the way to the end and it means a lot to me, so you are a special few and thank you for being here still. So. This one goes out to you, and until the next one, cheers.